Yes, a child. Good morning to you. I believe you are fine. Praise God forevermore. We are sharing truth this morning on God can be very funny. And this is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 19, the entire chapter. You are warmly, warmly welcome to the Really, Really Knowing God channel. I am Pastor Larry Adeneko. The channel is packaged to inform and inspire you into real knowledge of the very real God that we serve, powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Exaspiration, the place. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus. If you desire to really understand this fantastic God of ours, this is your favorite channel. Yes, we are praying. Father, we give you thanks. You are a help God and you have helped us so much upon this channel and in this program, this endeavor. Father, take all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. As we go on to share again this morning, we receive of you the ability, the unction to do it in such a way that your people will benefit maximally. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 19.1 Now Saul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delights greatly in David. So Jonathan told David, saying, My father Saul seeks to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard until morning and stay in a secret place and hide. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak with my father about you. Then, what I, whatever I observe, I will tell you. Okay, okay, thus Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against david because he has not sinned against you because his works have been very good towards you for he took his life in his hands and killed the philistine and the lord brought a great deliverance for all israel you saw it and rejoiced why then will you sin against innocent blood to kill david without a cause so so he did the voice of jonathan and Saul swore as the lord lives he shall not be killed okay let's pause and I do a little bit so um saul asked jonathan and his servants that they should kill david amazing you know <laughs> you get that far like i said all the time insecurity that was what is still driving him that is insecurity that is jealousy that was envy was still driving him okay and this is what he does to people insecurity is a terrible thing and everything you need to do to get over it please do at times you may need to tell somebody uh, that is a very very positively minded person around you that see i have this problem with this person i just feel insecure say so you may just be able to get some help you know from somebody okay or if you say spouse yeah, you want to share with your spouse i don't know why i feel insecure you know you are, you know you have always known me but this time around this is the way tell share it because it drives people to do absolutely unbelievable things so this man told his son kill this david told all his servants kill this david again in all of this you wonder what about his conscience you can see something happening to his conscience. His conscience is beginning to gradually be destroyed. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's being affected now. It's, it's being uh, dulled now. Okay? That conscience is, you know, is gradually being destroyed. Maybe not totally destroyed yet, but it's on the way, you know, to being destroyed because of the things that you would do. And that's, those are the things that... Um, and jealousy, envy, insecurity, you know, possessiveness at times. Those are the things they do to people. And you should never allow that to happen to you. Some people will try to find a way to justify jealousy and all that. The dangers of those things are too many. God help us in Jesus' mighty name. So, we say another thing here. That Jonathan's love for David stands firm. It really, really stands firm. He said, look, this is what my father is trying to do. He's trying to kill you. Now, some other person will say, what kind of son is that? How in the world can you tell on your father? How can you go and reveal your father? that secret to you know even though you why don't you just hide him and you send him on some errand so that your father will not don't you don't have to tell him that if your father will kill him and all that but you see it's a covenant here and for those who understand covenants you would understand why jonathan had to do something in that direction so his love stands firm and we should learn from there that love our love should stand firm in all situations praise god so he now pleaded kind of interceded before his father that why are you going to do this dad you know and all those things and we should one big lesson we learn from there is that whenever we have opportunity to be peacemakers please let's try and be peacemakers you never know what god can use you for to save a life or to you know to save a relationship or to save a job or to save a marriage 
you know, whatever. You never know. But wherever God grants you the opportunity to let that peacemaker thing that God has called us into uh, function through you, let it be. In the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord will reward you. Okay, then. And um, Jonathan, verse 7, then Jonathan called David and Jonathan told him all these things. So Jonathan brought David to Saul and was in his presence as as in the times past. And there was war again. And David went out and fought with the Philistines and struck them with a mighty blow and they fled from him. Now, the distressing spirit from the Lord I've explained that <laughs> that his present spirit came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing music with his hands. Then Saul sought to pin David to the wall with his spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped that night. <clears throat> okay, again, we see that that problem again um, uh, here, but God will always make you escape all these things uh, that evil people may plan or people who have allowed some evil spirit to take hold of them, you will escape in Jesus' name. But you see, that's something I want us to look at here. This is the same person. When he, that spirit came upon him, David will play and the spirit will lift. But this time around, David was playing. Rather than the spirit lift, the spirit rather moved him to kill David. In other words, the the uh, services of David are no longer working. The the instrument he was playing and the music and his ministration to God that was having an effect and healing Saul, they were no longer healing him. Okay, and that's what you know. It, it, it rather it is it, something to think about. What happened? Because you see, Saul had now allowed room for this evil spirit to to take root in his life, or allowed the evil spirit to invite seven more, more wicked than himself, you know, to be in his life. And that happens when um, you give the spirit uh, room like that. They create an ecosystem for them to operate in. They create the necessary milieu or medium for them to fester and to grow grow in there and to take roots in some life so much so that um what used to work what used to um relieve the person would no longer because the demons are now more or their activity they are now better entrenched in there but you see we are the ones that allow these things from attitude of heart you know uh, unforgiveness for example this jealousy for example you know uh, um you know those, those attitude of heart that would allow these demons to have root to take root in somebody's life we have to be careful about them resentment for whatever i just don't like him have you heard that before <laughs> you know from 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 christians these things allow demons to have take root in your life and then what usually would help you or relieve you would no longer be able to do so so also send messengers to david's house to watch him and to kill him in the morning and michael david's wife told him do not if you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you'll be killed. So Michael let David down through a window. He went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it on the bed and put cover of goat's hair for his head. And Saul covered with his clothes. So Saul sent messenger to take David and said he's sick. Then Saul sent messenger to back to, to see the saying, Bring him up to me in bed that I may personally kill him. And then when they came in and they saw the image in the bed, the cover of goats, they said to Saul, Michael, why have you deceived me like this? And she sent my enemy away so that he escaped. And Michael said, to Saul, he said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill? So David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and said at Naoth. Now it was told Saul, saying, Take no David at Naoth in Ramah. Saul sent messenger to David. And when they saw the group of prophets prophesying, Samuel standing as leader over them, and the Spirit of God came upon messengers of Saul. And they also prophesied. And when Saul told, when Saul was told, he sent more messengers, and they prophesied likewise. Then Saul sent more messengers the third time, and they prophesied also. Eventually, um, uh, he came around and asked where David was, and somebody said they are in Neoth in Ramah. So he went there to Neoth in Ramah. Then the Spirit of God came upon him also, and he went on and prophesied until he came to Neoth in Ramah. And he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel like, in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Therefore, they say Saul also among the prophets. Interesting story. So we find out that <clears throat> um, he was now becoming like a sadist. He said, bring him like that with his bed. Let me kill him. That's what happens when evil spirits have taken over somebody altogether. You may never allow that in your life in Jesus' mighty name. But you see, his wife was faithful to him, allowed him to escape, okay? But the, the, the other part is the, the funny aspect of it. God can be very, very funny at times. Look at all that happened. You know, he sent people to go and kill David. When they got there, they began to prophesy. And then he sent the second set, more prophets. And he sent the third set, more prophets. Finally, he saw the king... 
also went and he began to prophesy. He even pulled himself naked and lay down, you know, on the ground was prophesying. God can be very funny. You know that this is not the only time things like this happen. You have, you have seen cases of uh, uh, auditory. <laughs> people begin to hear some noise and, you know, made Israel to record great victories. At times, people began to see some mirage. Can you remember? God can do really funny things. The, one of the funniest ones to me um, was when um, some soldiers came to arrest Elisha and God, Elisha just prayed, God made them blind and he made them more blind. Elisha led them to the city center. You know, everybody surrounded them and then opened their eyes and they saw where they were. These were soldiers, you know, all their arms, they were disarmed and they were helpless. And the king said, Elisha, I kill them. said, why do you kill the same people? Give them food, send them back to their master. And they never came back after that because they were ridiculed. Honestly, at times God can be very, very funny. And I pray that somebody will know God that much today and enjoy God. Thank you very much for sharing time. You know, this is a little bit of a long one, but it's better to clear that and then move on to other things by the grace of God. Thank you very much for sharing time with us. We really appreciate you. Enjoy your day.